The year of our Lord 2023 was the year I spent a lot of time watching movies. I think I entered a movie theater more times than I entered a chapel with my Catholic parents. Lord give me strength. And that's the only reason I'm making this video at all. I don't know. I guess I just wanted to actually talk about the shit I did this year in some way, shape, or form. And what better way to do that than by giving in and switching up video formats entirely. So there's different types of movies that I watched this year. And they're not separated by genre. They're separated by whether or not I actually watch them in theaters. So there's going to be a lot of movies here that are not released in the same year. I have no excuse for this. I actually no, I do. I want to talk about Isle of Dogs and Bird Boy and you can't stop me. So here we go. Durable Flicks of 2023. Do the Mario switch. This is a movie about this obscure character named Zelda. You might have heard of him. They go to the Mushroom Kingdom and his brother goes missing and they got to save him or something. I, I, I grew up playing this game, so it's kind of hard for me to see this movie in a negative light. But I have to try. This movie was objectively alright. Like, it was a kid's movie in the end, so I can't say much about deeper meaning, and, and it's fucking Mario. One thing that does bother me is just how much they tried to shove in from the games that ended up being dead weight. Like, there was this whole thing with the Kongs that had no merit, and, and it still bothers me that we got this bastard instead of fucking Kong, where's my guy? Remember how they had an entire adaptive OST for the cart scene, but then they replaced it with Take On Me? That... That actually kind of pissed me off, I can't lie. But there's also some stuff that was like genuinely really cool. Like a lot of shit was eye candy. Like all of the, none of the upgrades were like unused. Yeah. The Tanuki suit chase was like really cool. I got goosebumps from watching that. I, I think that was mostly just because of the sheer size of the thing that was chasing him. Like, I, like that thing was huge. I don't know. I think I'm just a fucking crybaby. <laughs> It's basically just a bunch of aspects from the series shoved into an mp4 file, but I loved it It was cool to see the Brooklyn father was just Malin from OOT And I think that's pretty cool I think you're nuts Barbie is a movie that follows Barbara. <laughs> Fuck me. Barbie is a movie that follows Barbara Ree and Ken to go to the real world on a self-learning adventure about accepting themselves and the beauty and the being of oneself. It's what the fuck was I trying to say? Follows Barbara Ree and Ken on going to the real world and f fuck Barbara. No. Barbie is a movie that follows Barbara Ree and Ken going to the real world and going on a self-learning adventure about accepting themselves and the beauty and being oneself. It's neat. I, I don't have a lot to say about this one. Ma mainly just because I don't remember much of it beyond the plot and this. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 just because we get to see the drive guy dance. Dude, I feel bad for Ryan Gosling just because of the sheer amount of characters he's played being mischaracterized. Like, Dead Internet Theory is real. How how many people who've seen, like, edits of Ryan Gosling, like, there's something inside you that's hard to explain. How many people have actually seen Drive or Blade Runner that made those? By the way, watch Blade Runner. It's really good. You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Blade Runner is an overall weirdly believable idea of a dystopian society and it's kind of concerning. Ryan Gosling dates a literal e-girl and it follows him uncovering this giant years-long conspiracy that the original Blade Runner with Harrison Ford starts. I, I think, I don't know, I haven't watched that one. The visual is sick, I like it when he gets angry and then drowns a woman because he's just like me for real. Ryan Geese's acting as a jaded, apathetic police officer is insanely good, and the realization of an actual personality with hope is really entertaining to watch, with a beautiful payoff. Overall, really good movie, and it truly is inspiring that he would then go on to do a dance number with Shang-Chi. How do you review a history movie by, by checking how accurately everything depicted was? I'm not a fucking historian. Like, I wish I was Philomena Kunk, but I'm not. How many three wise men were there? Who knows? Oh. Okay, you know what? I'll just judge everything except for the plot. Camera work, amazing. I loved it. It was so cool. Sound, I watched it in the Canadian equivalent of IMAX, and I honest to God had to cover my ears to stomach it. 10 out of 10. Acting. 
I, I mean, it seemed good. I, I love the characterization of Sloppin after the bomb dropped and how he's just jaded. I, I think it was beautifully done. There's nothing I can really say about this movie other than it was really cool to watch it, but that's about it. Oh, wait, no, there is actually. Um, the I am become oh, death good. line, <laughs> it drops during a sex scene for the first time, and I just... I... <laughs> Where'd they get their info for that one? Oh my god! Oh my god! It's Spider-Man! It's Spider-Man! Spider- This is the big one for me, not because this movie meant a lot to me, but because I made myself watch it three separate times in theaters. I really want to get this one over with, because goddamn do I want to talk about one character that is awesome and epic. The animation is stellar in every regard. Love that they always found a stylistic ideal instead of going all out at times, like that whole thing with the spot. Hi, mid-editing gerbil here, because I explained it like shit. Basically, mid-production of Spider-Verse, they thought about giving the spot more, like, ability to emote with his face via making the actual spot on his face move and make different shapes and sometimes form a mouth. This ended up not working out because they decided to stick with the theme of spot losing his identity and they felt that giving that ability to the spot would give one back to him, which kind of goes against the character. I like that they did that because it actually fits with the story. Okay, back to, back to past gerbil. Music was amazing, the story was... Okay. I thought it was great, but the people I was watching it with hated the ending and I told them to keep crying because we get more Spider-Man. Like, I, I get why you would hate it. That's about it. I Very loved it. Satisfying. Anyways, I think... Um, no, I'm not done. Um, Hobie Brown, my goat, I love this motherfucker to death. It shows up for less than a quarter of the movie, becomes the biggest plot device, all the while being in accordance to his whole idea of anarchy. It like, nothing he does is out of character, and he's the best character, period. I'm so excited for Beyond, and I want to watch it the moment it comes out as well, just like I did with Into and Across. I'll probably love it regardless of its flaws when it comes out, because I love everything Spider-Man, and I'm not even the biggest nerd about it. I love Spidey and everything he stands for. Superman and Spider-Man are my favorite heroes from their respective verses, and I'm really excited for what's to come. Please, Marvel, give us Taki Yamashiro! I'll do anything. I make him friends with Penny for all I give a shit. They're the, 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 the two mecha people. I, I, I literally, all I want to hear is to be in, I, I just want to be in theaters. And you spider ass <laughs>this is my first ever horror movie in theaters, and that's a fact I have to take to my grave. I don't really have anything to say about this one that hasn't been said already, because it's like pretty simple in nature. Michael Nonafton gets fired by this guy and talks to Shaggy such that he can get a job guarding at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, hilarity ensues. My only complaint about this one is the ending. Look at you! Look at the sigmas you've become! I don't think it sucked, but I feel like everything at like the climax was forced. Like you, you okay. I know this was forced for sure. Like why does he say it like that? Y you know, not that they care, but it makes me sad. Also, why the fuck did they make the cupcake easily the scariest animatronic in the movie? If not at least like the most deadly, like wh what was the point in this? Apparently the guard at the beginning was initially gonna be Markiplier, which, no, honestly, like three, no, three other cameos was enough. Like, they made the I think they made the best call, both for the sake of the ambitious Iron Lung that Mark is directing, and also because no one would take the movie seriously right off the bat. At least now we have to wait for Matthew Patrick to clown on. Don't you tell me how many calories I need. Well, I'm the biggest bird. I'm the biggest bird. I'm the biggest bird. I'm not really a Ghibli movie enthusiast, but I've never particularly hated any of the movies that Ghibli's made. I, I mean, Princess Mononoke is one of my favorite movies like ever, so I guess that would qualify me as a fa fuck this. I'll talk about that in another video that I'll never make. The boy in the heron follows a boy who meets a bird, and then Ghibli magic ensues. Somehow, that is the simplest way to describe the movie. It being a fantasy movie, I'm sure it has like some kind of overarching message that I couldn't find. It, it, it really is a beautifully stunning movie with elements to its animation that I could talk about for hours. But for the sake of this video, that is the main thing I can really compliment it on. It's visuals, which once again, is kind of a given. With these movies, th there's just so much passion with these movies every time. It's it's beautiful, I think. The story was a little confusing, though. Like, unless you're a subtle thematic and analysis god, which I am not, you'll probably not get much from it. I loved it. It's not for everyone. If you're a Ghibli fan, you'll probably love it.
Call that Stockholm Syndrome. Okay, that's all the ones I saw in theaters this year. Uh, I can't really think of a transition from one point to another, so I'm just gonna have like I'm just gonna go go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and start. The landmass of Mutz is a movie that follows the journey of a dog named Chief, and also four others, but not really, as they meet a boy who's looking for his old dog, who he suspects is also on the island. The movie's directed by Wes Anderson, who directed Isle of Dogs in the exact same style. Wait, what the fuck? There's two movies named Isle of Dogs? What the fuck? The movie's directed by Wes Anderson, who directed Fantastic Mr. Fox in the exact same style as this movie, and it really shows. The way the movie's shot is reminiscent of the Mr. Fox in its primary use of long shots and close-ups, barely any tilting shots, and very centered points of focus in all its shots. All Wes Anderson movies have this to some extent, especially if you've seen like his live action ones. I mean, I've only seen Moonrise Kingdom, so, you know, I guess I wouldn't know. But it's especially present in his animated movies. I would know that one, I've seen both. The movie does a lot of exposition dumping, but less the annoying type and more the genuinely informative and interesting type. Nothing explained is really out of place or unnecessary in the world of the movie. The themes of the movie are very heartfelt through both main and the subplots, adding depth to both characters and situations that the said characters are in. And it's overall really cool. I'd bite. This is my favorite movie of all time, period. And I'd love for more people to check it out. Not talked about nearly enough. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at the script for Bird Boy, and I'm starting to doubt if the previous one is my favorite, because I went off on this. Okay, here we go. When you think of everything wrong with the world, there's... What the fuck did I start off with? When you think of everything wrong with the world, there's so much shit to bring up. Like, there's pollution, poverty, wars, abuse, drugs, violence, and that eventually goes on to break people beyond repair in two different ways. Either you end up wanting to do nothing but leave, completely detested and disgusted towards and by the place you live, or you learn to accept yourself as this environment. Nothing that one can do except quite literally cope. Fucking skill issue. You took the life lottery and you lost. Fucking cry. Bird Boy the Forgotten Children is a Spanish animated movie that encapsulates either side of these mentalities in a way that no other movie I've ever seen I think can, or that any movie ever will. There's only one part of the story that I'd really call a subplot, but that's only because every part of the movie is important to it in some regard. I guess I should talk about the main one. The movie takes place on an island with no name, which is home to a bunch of little anthropomorphic animal people. And a while back, there was a giant accident that occurred in the power plant that was on the said island. A giant nuclear explosion occurred, killing everyone inside and permanently polluting the wildlife and corrupting everyone to this jaded mood that looms over the island throughout the movie. The movie itself follows Bird Boy, son of Birdman, yes, really, who is a drug-addicted, paranoid, but kind-hearted, borderline flightless bird who quite literally has inner demons manifest as what happened to him as a kid while he's on the run from the police. Meanwhile, his ex and her friends are trying to escape the island once and for all. The movie was animated by the folks who made Unicorn Wars, and you can really tell. You know how Ghibli has a style that you can see and immediately see that, oh, that's Ghibli. Or you can see a Wes Anderson film and go, oh, that's Anderson, just by his cinematography. Bird Boy has that. And it's astounding how much effort goes into the real dryness of the post-apocalyptic world. The themes... Okay, y you know what? If you've seen any of my previous videos, especially the, the school video essays, you know that I'm an advocate for mental health. I think that one of the best ways to take care of oneself is to get to know people, to understand what people are going through on a day-to-day, -day, understand all the shit that's happening to them, whether it be an addiction, generational trauma, bias through the factors out of someone's control, genuine disorders. It's all something that should be a valid reason to get help. Bird Boy and the Forgotten Children portrays these issues and nails them to a T. This movie has a ton of thematic elements, most of which tie to the treatment of people and how it affects them. Shit like, as previously mentioned, addiction, gaslighting, hyper-religious household, mental health, racism, and so, so much more. I could go on for hours, but I'll leave it at this. This movie is truly special. No Ryan Gosling dance scene, so I'm gonna have it to do- I'm gonna- fuck- movie sucks. 2 out of 10. Bring the drive guy in. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna talk about one more. Fucking shit ass movie. Okay, you know what? No, 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 fuck this. I'm gonna be genuine with this one. Because I was genuine with the last two. Fuck you. I love this man like no other. Adam Sandler, I will find you and I will suck your. 
Eight Crazy Nights is unironically the third worst movie I've ever seen. And, and look, I don't know what the second one is, but I can show you a clip from the first. Mom and Dad! It's still gold, and I, I love it, and I don't know if I can say the same about Eight Crazy Nights. It's a movie about Adam Sandler, whose character's name I genuinely forget, and I really don't want to look up. And he meets this Yeti man after being confronted about just being like a genuine asshole. Goes on a magnificent self-improvement journey in the name of Hanukkah. I, I want to talk about this one. It literally, the only thing I can think of like complimenting it on is the animation. Because when it's not animating, like, fluid snot-nosed children or deer licking shit from ice... Oh my god damn it, I hate this movie. It's, it's good. Like, really good. The animation is not bad. Apparently there was a bit of crunch towards the end of development, but I doubt Adam Sandler was in charge of the animation department. Adam Sandler? What are you doing here? Waiting for them to play Gangnam Style. It's nice, but not to take seriously. Final verdict. It made this video possible, so 10 out of 10. That's it. I think a large portion of this video was just... I wanted to do a proper recap of what I did this year. And be able to go back and genuinely talk about what I did properly. Like... Okay, 2022 and 2023 has been some of the most vivid years for me as a whole, and movies definitely helped a lot with just being able to enjoy myself as everything fell into place. I've had a lot of people around me to enjoy this stuff with, to talk to them about it, to discuss and argue over these things with, and honestly I couldn't be more thankful for them. Movies in general are about as special to me as video games, which is to say a fucking lot. I watched a lot this year, some of which I didn't get to talk about, and honestly probably never will, at least not on YouTube. But I still think these are movies that are super enjoyable to most people, and sincerely, if you were here for my enjoyment of these alongside me, then thank you for the company. I can't be any more thankful for all the shit that I've been able to endure and the fact that I've been able to do it both in person or online. So, if you're watching this, thank you sincerely for being a part of my journey over the past year. Maybe you'll see yourself in these movies. I know I sure did. Regardless, thank you for watching. To some of you, thanks for being friends. And to everyone, Happy New Year. My name is Bobs. Bobs Kobayashi. How can I be of service to you? As long as we're together, everything is gonna be okay. You are part of the people that make me. I'm Spider Man. No one can take that away from me. You look like a girl. Good night, man. Good night, Dad. Good night, Dad. <laughs>